Hey everybody, I am John Barker, and in this episode of Here Record Show and Tell, we're going to take a look at the ATEM streaming bridge from Blackmagic Design. And uh, it's just come over to the channel, finally got my hands on one to test out. Um, but in the interest of full disclosure, Blackmagic has sent this over to the channel to take a look at and then send back whenever the videos are done. So um, they're not going to watch this video or anything like that before I post it. So this device has been made to basically receive a stream from an ATEM Mini Pro. I have mine here sitting on the side. And uh, from that device, you will stream just like you do to YouTube or something like that. But instead of YouTube, you could stream to this device instead. And then you have an SDI out and a HDMI out in order to intercept that stream and use it in a building or maybe bring it into a production. On the Blackmagic Design website, it's been pitched as a way of bringing in a, uh, a journalist maybe from somewhere in the field or something like that. But certainly as people gra grab the device and get their hands on it and test it out, we've been really wanting to see if you could use it to bring in a caller into your live show or into your production and, uh, and talk to them like that. Bringing a caller into a production from somewhere else in the world is definitely something I want to do in a future video. But for now, let's just take a look at the device itself and some things you can do with it. Taking a closer look at the device, we can see that there is an SDI reference in and a reference in as well. There's an Ethernet port here, and then there's a few uh, LEDs there you can just about see. One is for Internet OK, and the other one is for Stream OK. On the other side, we have USB for connecting to the computer for the software utility, and then a couple of SDI outputs, HDMI output, and then we have uh, power as well. Um, you can see some uh, little dip switches on the side here. And then on the back, there's the, uh, the details for those dip switches. You can only do a few things right now on the streaming bridge. Um, that's a look around the device. You can see it fits into the sort of uh, converter style design that Blackmagic has been making before, the um, HDMI to SDI converters and things like that. So it fits in that family pretty well. So for the purposes of this video, I do want to show off what it would be like to bring in someone from a different studio. Uh, so let's take a look at that. So here's my guests over in their studio. They have a camera set up and an audio source all going into their ATEM Mini Pro, and the guest is ready to go. Now back in my studio, I want to give them the details of my streaming bridge so that they have something to stream to. With the device connected over USB and powered on, I can see here in the ATEM setup utility that I have my ATEM streaming bridge pop up. And if I just go into the settings of that, I can see a few details. I'm going to leave things as they are in the setup tab for now. All I want to do is give my guest some details over in this tab here, external ATEM Mini Pro. And if I scroll down, I can see some details for that. Uh, let's just say its platform name will be uh, John's Studio. That'll work just fine. And I'll leave the server and the key as they are for now. And I want to use the highest quality streaming high. Perfect. I'll just save these ATEM settings and then I can send that to my guest via email. It's a very small file, so that'll be just fine. And I'll give it a name like John's Studio. Perfect. Hit save on that. And then I'll email that file off to my guest. My guest just got the email and they will pop up to the stream tab and load streaming settings. In here, they just need to navigate to the XML file that I sent them. There it is right there. And they'll just import that. Over on the live streaming settings, they can actually just go to the drop down and they'll see John's studio is right there. This is what we set up a second ago. And when the guest is ready to go, they can hit on air. Now back in my main studio, I can see that the stream OK button has uh, lit up. So that's a good sign. It's not flashing anymore like it was a second ago. It's lit up and I'm receiving a stream. Excellent. And then all I have to do is connect the HDMI to the HDMI output on the ATEM streaming bridge, and I can get my guest's video and audio coming into my production. And now I'm able to mix my guest into the production just as I would with any other camera source, which is really nice. So, can you hear me okay? Hey, can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Can you hear me? No? So as you can see, there is a bit of a limitation here. Because they're sending me really good video and audio, I'm actually not sending them anything. So for all they know, they're not a part of the production. Uh, in this case, you can use something like Zoom maybe to have a real-time conversation with them in a different way. And then they just bring you uh, that really good audio and video in via the streaming bridge. But you will have to come up with another way of two-way communication 
because this is not built into the device as it is. I wanted to take a quick look at the delay on the ATEM streaming bridge. Now, this is under pretty good settings because I have my ATEM Mini Pro connected to the same switch as the ATEM streaming bridge. And now if you take a look at the multi-view mode of that same ATEM Mini Pro, you can see there on the right-hand side is the main program feed coming directly from the camera. And then on the left-hand side, you can see the version that's being streamed through the switch and then back into the uh, streaming bridge and then HDMI into the same ATEM. Hope that makes sense. Uh, but you can see as I do a few little claps, you can see the difference between the live me and the other me coming back all the way through that journey. Like I said, under pretty nice optimal conditions because everything's connected basically right beside each other. So you can imagine that having a conversation with somebody over the internet would be, uh, would be uh, maybe tricky at times as the delay gets created and uh, their video and audio comes back to you again. So the pros on this device, um, I think it's inexpensive enough to have a couple of them on hand, maybe one per uh, journalist that you have and you can give them specific details or maybe one per caller if you want to bring in a few different people into a live stream, something like that. I think it's, uh, it's inexpensive enough for that to be possible. Another of the pros is the seamless use with the ATEM Mini Pro and the ATEM Mini Pro ISO. Um, I've been quite happy about how easy it is just to set it up and get going really fast. Uh, um, it's always nice to sort of go in the same ecosystem of things like that, just so they work really nicely together. And a couple of the cons, the first one for me really is the design. I would love to have seen it in the Terran X Mini style so you could rack mount it and it wouldn't have cables coming out of both sides. I'm not a huge fan of that kind of design. It kind of makes for a, a messy setup whenever you're out on a gig or something like that. Another one of the cons is kind of the opposite of one of the pros, which is that you can only use it with A10 Mini Pro and A10 Mini Pro ISO at the minute. Uh, maybe they'll open that up in the future for other streaming solutions. But for now, you can only stream from those devices to this. Uh, so that means that you can't use any other thing like vMix, OBS, or anything like that. I'd love to see that open up in the future. So who knows if this will become a pro in the future. Uh, one last con for me is the fact that you can't actually do any two-way communications with this. Um, and that delay means that uh, it makes it pretty hard to use it as a call-in kind of thing. I can't really blame Blackmagic for that one because you know, it's not something that they specifically say you should use this for. But um, some way of uh, trying to narrow down the delay it probably has to be a different protocol completely, of course. I know it would be much more useful for many more situations if you could um, if you could get that delay back and forth narrowed down as much as possible. So that just leaves the price. I've seen it around £200, uh, pounds, $250 or so. Um, so like I said before, it's uh, fairly affordable if you have this kind of device in mind for a few use cases. I know certainly for like journalism and stuff like that, out on the field, it would be really great for that. We've done a lot of press conferences recently and stuff, and uh, many of them are using live views and all that kind of gear to get feeds back to their uh, HQ. And uh, while it's not going to re completely replace those kind of things, the pairing with the A10 Mini Pro um, to the streaming bridge would be a really nice setup for many uh, many setups like that. So that's a quick look at the ATEM streaming bridge. Um, I plan to make more videos about this as I always do about these kind of products and I wanna do lots more testing on all sorts of things. But if there's anything in particular you wanna see, let me know in the comments below. And uh, I'll see you again in the next video. Bye-bye, thanks for watching.